Is it their eyes? Their fur? Or simply, their moves? No matter what it is, face it, they're irresistible. It's time to catch up with some of the freshest faces that we share our world with. From sunrise to sunset, be immersed in their lives. Mingle with these youngsters and get to know them and their families better. Experience all the hustle and bustle of their daily routines, all while getting up close to these baby animals in our world. Day is taking us around the planet, getting face to face with zoo babies, great and small. Coming up, this tiny baby's all set to make a big splash, taking his first dip in the hippo pond. Plus, make way, rhino calf coming through. This little fellow was made to romp. And get set for a furry roller coaster ride with a pair of baby marmosets. They really know how to monkey around. Our world is home to millions of animal species. One way to encounter a small sample of Earth's rich biodiversity is to visit a zoological park. Zoos have been part of civilized societies for thousands of years. These days, one of the most important roles they play is in conservation. This shift in focus not only better serves the animals in their care, but also their wild cousins. Many zoos take pride in being part of global breeding programs designed to stockpile creatures that are under threat. Some have even helped vulnerable species back from the brink of extinction. Numerous insurance populations are also given safe havens at zoos, so they can build up their numbers for eventual reintroduction to the wild. In these places, every birth is special. And with furry, scaly and feathery bundles arriving all the time, what better excuse is needed to spend time with more zoo babies? It's the start of another day. <laughs> Who knows what's on the agenda for this tiger cub? Anything could happen. Its feline relatives are easing into the day more gently. is contagious, even in the animal kingdom. No one knows exactly why. A young tapir is getting a little more shut-eye while it can. But some don't have the choice and find themselves dragged into the day. sun is the perfect option. Some, like this baby squirrel monkey, are determined not to wake up, no matter how rough the piggyback ride gets. It's difficult to get up and around when there are warm furry hugs to be had.
these young gibbons have found a gentle way to get into the swing of things this morning. Rocking on a hammock with Mum. Down on ground level, the deer are hot to trot early risers. Raring to go, hungry for the morning to start. Finally, it's breakfast. They may not be the speediest residents, but these tortoises are well into their morning meal already. Sharing their greens, it's easy to see they're a close-knit family circle. There's room for two at this breakfast nook. Obviously, table manners are not such a big deal in the primate world. Why just eat out of the food bowl when you can also play in it? While these youngsters squabble over the seating arrangements, this baby orangutan is happy to watch while sharing some fruit with Mum. Giraffes have no qualms about sticking their tongues out to get their fill. They can munch down about 30 kilos of food a day. The calves are just tall enough to peep into the feeding station. Those impressive lickers can get to be 50 centimetres long. When it comes to zoo catering, variety is the key. Everyone has their favourites. Some have simple tastes, while others like more exotic foods. Peanuts are a great crunchy treat, but they can make you thirsty. An innovative cup for a drink, good to the last drop. This furry chef is busy preparing its breakfast, skinning a grape. Looks like this isn't the first time they've done this. Maybe this bit of wall will get the job done. Whoops! Finally, fruity perfection. Some choose to share but in the baboon world, breakfast thievery is rife. This orange baby won't get caught out like that, collecting a stash of treats for later on. Its little friend is hungry, but can't wait to hang out. What a fun way to multitask. No matter what's on offer, the first meal of the day always tastes better when friends and family are close by. The morning is getting underway nicely. With full bellies, it's now time to fill some young minds. This giant anteater baby is being taught how to find its own food, putting its keen sense of smell to good use. Next, climbing practice. Surprisingly, anteaters are quite agile, able to scale termite mounds and trees to heights of 20 metres. Just not today, though. Elsewhere, some sloth bear cubs are also rising to this challenge. Even natural masters of climbing need to work on their skills. It's a big effort for a little bear. Made it! So has its classmate. Oops! As the largest tree-dwelling mammal, orangutans spend most of their lives up in the branches. So learning young is a must. This baby's having a blast being shown the ropes by its helpful friend. It's 
an orangutan tangle. Higher up, this kid's really got the hang of it. Such fast shimmying. Down below, this pair are almost unknotted. Right, back to the challenge at hand. They might be great apes, but they certainly know how to monkey around. When they grow up, these young orangutans will be about seven times stronger than a human. Learning from others is a great way to get the right moves. They don't become independent from their mothers until they are five years old, giving these orange acrobats plenty of time to master the art of climbing. Time to check out the family album. First up is a rodent of the prickly kind, native to Asia, Africa and the Americas, the porcupine. Baby porcupines, or porcupets, are born well-developed, the mother producing a litter of two. These prehensile-tailed porcupines are part of a captive breeding program, weighing just over 400 grams when they were first born. Their soft quills become hard a few days after birth. Their spikes, which are actually modified hairs, becoming fully mature in a couple of months. Porcupets are completely dependent on their mother for the first four weeks, able to look after themselves by the four-month mark. These prickly creatures are nocturnal, foraging at night and resting in long networks of burrows during the day. Like other rodents, porcupines have large incisors and powerful jaws used for crushing seeds and nuts. Eventually, they'll grow to around 70 centimetres long and weigh a few kilograms. Sometimes known as quill pigs, porcupines are sociable animals, living in groups. With help from their natural defences, they are able to reach ages of 10 years or more. Next is another unusual rodent, the Nutria from South America. Also known as Koipa, females give birth to several young. They are born weighing only around 200 grams, entering the world fully furred with their eyes open. Babies stay with their mother for about eight weeks. They grow rapidly for the first five months, munching on a wide variety of plant materials. Nutrias might look shaggy, and they are. Their coats have three layers of fur, two sets of waterproof guard hairs, plus a lush undercoat. These rodents are never far from water, and thanks to their webbed hind feet, they are strong swimmers. They can even dive underwater for five minutes or so. From a distance, they are often mistaken for beavers, until their long, thin tails give them away. These natural rudders, helping nutrients steer their way through the wetter parts of their homes. The morning is getting on, and some of the zoo babies are already in need of a clean. The fork of a tree makes a great washdown for this tiger cub, while its mum gives it a rough facial with her raspy tongue. All done, and now Junior can get back to prowling practice. A baby orangutan is almost clean. It's just checking one last spot on its wrist. Nitpicking runs in this baboon family. The grown-ups are first to have the pest control treatment. Then, after a quick sunbathe, it's the baby's turn.
Right now, this young giant anteater could do with a back scratcher. Maybe the wall will work. When it comes to preening, spoonbills have got it made. Their wide bills can really power through their feathers. While working on its balancing skills, this youngster's giving itself a foot spa. Well, sort of. Here's a baby that knows a few things about keeping clean. A giraffe's tongue can really get to those hard-to-reach places. Clean as a whistle. With bath time out of the way, let's join an unusual African baby on his way to a swimming lesson. At the grand age of three weeks, this is his first dip in the pygmy hippo pool. For a beginner, this little fellow looks like a natural. He's keeping mum close by for reassurance. Time for a quick break on the shore. Once he's mastered the shallows, this calf will be able to venture into deeper waters. While pygmy hippos are aquatic creatures, they don't spend nearly as much time in the water as their larger cousins. This smaller species prefers to hang out in moist rainforests. But when threatened, this is where pygmy hippos rush for safety. So being confident in the water is an important life skill for these tiny babies to master. Watching him paddle around the pool, this little guy is off to a great start. Let's leave the hippo pond and spend some time with another group of African animals, baboons. There are five different species of these old world monkeys, all of them having large, powerful bills and dog-like muzzles. Like other primates, baboons are very social creatures, living in large troops. During the day, the ladies and their babies hang around in small bands. Baby baboons are born with quite dark coats. They upgrade to adult fur when they're about two months old. The babies keep a tight grip on mum for the first two weeks. Then, when they're strong enough, they start to explore and nibble on solids. A flower patch is a great place for a young adventurer. And tasty. It's not unusual to see them riding around, clinging to their mother's belly. For the next 10 months, the youngsters are rarely more than a metre away from mum's reach. Young females tend to stay with their mother, forming a strong, lifelong bond. While the boys have to leave and make a good impression with another group. While they do spend most of their time browsing on the ground for food items like seeds, roots, insects and lizards, baboons do also head for the trees. A safe place to rest and hang out with the family. There are many ways zoo babies can enter the world. Some like to arrive via an egg. Like these rare reptiles, Philippines crocodiles. After three months in an incubator, it's finally hatching time. You can hear them calling out. This is a great opportunity to go behind the scenes and watch their whole life story unfold. Just like baby birds, crocodile hatchlings have what's called an egg tooth on the end of their snouts that helps them pick or break out of their leathery shells. The hatching process can take hours. This scaly bundle is very special. It's the happy result of this zoo's captive breeding program. 
Once the hatchling is measured and weighed, it can finally give swimming a try. Whoa! Soon, it's joined by a few of its siblings. The more babies, the better, as these small freshwater crocodiles are critically endangered in the wild. Each tiny reptile will hopefully play a big part in the recovery plan for this species. As they develop, their golden scales will darken. A Philippines crocodile is considered to be mature when it reaches a length of 150 centimetres. Until these precious babies can start families of their own, they'll be able to grow up here safely, under the dedicated care of their keepers. It's almost midday, a good time to check in on the pygmy hippo calf's progress. Being a swimming instructor is hungry work, so Mom's gone ashore to take an early lunch break. The calf won't munch into a healthy feast like this until he's a few months old. While his mum eats her fill, the baby waits for her in the shallows. Finally, she's making her way back into the pond. Hippos don't really swim as such. Instead, they sink and walk. When they're submerged, they can seal their ears and nostrils shut. Eventually, this baby will be able to stay under and explore for a few minutes. Hanging out in the water is also a must to keep his skin nice and moist, just the way hippos like it. Class is over. With only a few thousand left in the wild, this youngster and his mum are a big part of the future of their species. There's only so much fun you can cram into a morning. It's time for the zoo babies to have a rejuvenating snooze. Only a weary youngster could make this rocky couch look so comfortable. Its long arms swinging like a pendulum, clocking the seconds as it drifts off. Elsewhere, a clever sleepyhead has made itself a dark cubby house to nap in. This calf has sniffed out a good resting spot next to Mum. Warm, sunny locations are always popular for a snooze. Some like to buddy up, while others are happy to take their siestas solo. Winding down is so much nicer when there's a soft furry pillow on offer. No matter what part of the animal kingdom they're from, the best sleeps are the ones taken wrapped up inside warm, loving snuggles. Hanging out in the afternoons is what zoo babies do best. This young Shifark is having a blast bouncing around, showing off its acrobatic skills. Mum's seen it all before, though. Even a cheeky tail call can't get her to join in. Down on ground level, a stone marten kit is also on the hunt for action. Found some! Tails were made for chasing and biting. And so, our siblings. Stripey play fight. These cubs have got all the classic wrestling moves mastered. Like the ear chew. The face crunch. And the paw munch. This could take a while. And so could this. 
It's like a squirrel monkey rodeo. Nothing's going to buck this baby off its saddle. Meanwhile, the tiger wrestling match continues. Even though they're in care, these young big cats can't ignore their natural instincts to practice their defense techniques, cleverly disguised as play. Outside, this baby's had enough upside down fun. Time to flip things around and relax. This pair don't understand relaxing. They like to spend their afternoons at full speed. Zoos really are global villages. This here is home to some Brazilian primates, common marmosets. Let's visit. Thanks to those fluffy tufts of hair, they're sometimes called cotton-eared marmosets. The lady of the house is the proud mother of twins. Her little piggybackers are just two weeks old. When they first arrived, they only weighed about 50 grams, the same as a couple of AA batteries. Not surprisingly, common marmosets are some of the smallest monkeys in the world. It won't be long before this pair start to let go of their mom's back and get more adventurous. But for now, it looks like they're happy to tag along for the roller coaster ride. The female will nurse these youngsters until they're three months old. But she won't be doing the job alone. The father and the rest of the group all help to raise new family members. When the babies are weaned, they'll start to dine on things like fruit, nuts, eggs, and insects. By then, they should also have their own set of fluffy ear tufts to show off. Next, let's meet an Australian baby with equally interesting ears. This is a Bilby Joey. This little lady is quite special. She's the first Bilby to be born at her sanctuary home in three years. Great news for their breeding program as these marsupials are an endangered species. Now five months old, this little joey is already showing the characteristic good looks of a mature bilby. Large rabbit-like ears, long whiskers, and pointed nose. Despite being so young, she's already reached breeding age. So hopefully it won't be long before she hears the pitter-patter of her own babies, doing her bit to help her species bounce back. With animals from all walks of life calling zoos home, there's a huge variety of accommodation on offer. Speaking of huge, these extra tall inhabitants need their lodgings and feeding stations to have lofty ceilings, as mature giraffes can grow to be over five and a half meters tall. These long-legged youngsters also need plenty of open space to roam around. Zoo landscapes are also designed with the residents' happiness in mind. Features like ponds and waterfalls provide necessary creature comforts, while enrichments like climbing apparatus add an adventurous, challenging element for young and old alike. When it comes to indoor living, the coziness factor is a high priority for residents, as is security. For some, a simple pot is the perfect hideaway, while others like to get away from it all in more rustic surroundings. The bilbies have really branched out, turning their log cabin into an adventure playground as well the best of both worlds. Time to check out the family album. This afternoon, it's showcasing an Australian bird renowned for its beautiful colors. These parrots, however, don't start out with such an impressive palette of colors. 
Rainbow lorikeets hatch out bare, then develop a layer of grey fluffy down. Their eyes open after around nine days. By three weeks, their first feathers, known as pin feathers, start to appear. In another week, their true colours are shining through. Their little lorikeet cheeks are half feathered, half down. By the 40-day mark, the babies are just about fully feathered and ready to try out their wings. When fully grown, lorikeets spend their time foraging in amongst flowers for nectar and pollen, using their special brush-like tongues to mop up the sweet goodness. These parrots are also big fans of fruit, seeds and insects. With their bright red beaks, showy plumage and raucous screeches, rainbow lorikeets are natural show-offs. These cheeky birds always drawing an appreciative crowd. Next is an animal that might look like a cross between a bear and a cat, but is neither. Meet the Binturong. Up to three cubs are born in a litter. At this stage, they can neither see nor hear and are fully dependent on their mother. This baby is six weeks old and now weighs close to two kilograms. It's about the size of a pet cat. By this age, it can eat solid food and is inquisitive and playful. This little one will be mature in two and a half years and then spend its time mostly solo. In the wild, these bear cats, as they are sometimes known, live in thick, humid jungles of South and Southeast Asia. Even though they are carnivores, they feed mainly on fruit. Their tails are as long as their bodies and are prehensile or grippy just at the tip. When not feeding, they enjoy exploring their home. With their long, shaggy coats and fairly slow-moving ways, binturongs are sometimes mistaken for sloths. Apart from their whiskery good looks, Binturongs have a strange claim to fame. They smell like popcorn. This pleasant aroma tells any other Binturong that they're trespassing in another's territory. These unusual looking and smelling creatures can enjoy a long life of 25 years. the fun of visiting a zoo is the feeling that you're on a bit of a globe trot, visiting animals from different parts of the planet. Right now, Africa is calling. This mini savannah is the stomping ground of a family of white rhinos. Mum is easy to spot, thanks to her impressive horn. She has two youngsters in tow, her five-year-old daughter, plus a baby boy. At just eight months of age, the calf's horn is coming along nicely, but still has a fair way to go. These formidable growths are actually made of keratin, the same substance as hair and fingernails. It's afternoon tea time, and this little guy is helping himself. He's like a mini lawnmower. White rhinos are named for their square-lipped mouths rather than the colour of their thick skin. The word white actually means wide in Afrikaans. So rather than being white, these rhinos are actually grey, although this young man chooses to accessorise his hide with a thick coat of dirt. Most rhinos do, as the muddy layer protects them from the sun and insects. Plus acts like a body scrub to get rid of dead skin. Looks like the next course is being served. And the baby is making a run for it. When he grows up, 
he'll be able to bolt around at speeds of 40 to 50 kilometers per hour. He's got to beat his sister to that hay. With some fresh fuel in the tank, this baby's got energy to burn. Nothing like a few hot laps around this open plain home to work those growing legs. Time for a pit stop with Mum. This young man will stick close by her until she has her next calf. So until then, he's enjoying plenty of love and attention. Some of the best moments at a zoo happen behind the scenes. The arrival of newborns. This afternoon, we're able to share a special moment with one of the tallest land animals on the planet. After a long 15 months, this giraffe is about to become a mother. It's a happy landing for her calf. The long drop to the ground of nearly one and a half meters hasn't hurt this little girl. Instead, it's actually helped the calf take her first breath. The mother's first job, to clean her big baby, which is already two meters tall and weighing around 50 kilograms. It won't be long before she joins the rest of the calves born here in their open plain home. Her birth, another success story for captive breeding programs around the world. No matter where baby animals live, there's not much that beats a cuddle with mum or dad. Not much, except maybe a piggyback. Traditionally, this free ride is usually taken, as the name suggests, on the parent's back. But some youngsters like to mix it up and hang on to the belly. Sitting on the back seat, this little one looks like a jockey. No need for a saddle when you've got a tail to hang on to. Whoops! Here's a zoo mother going above and beyond the call of duty. All aboard! Whoa! It's a bumpy ride. One animal that specialises in wild rides are baby shifarks. What a kooky way to travel. Zoos play an important role in animal conservation, giving critically endangered species, like Sumatran tigers, a fighting chance. This zoo's dedication has paid off. Thanks to hidden cameras, we can see this proud mother's new cub taking his first steps outside the den. At birth, Sumatran tiger cubs weigh about a kilogram. Females can have up to five in a litter. So this little one is spoiled, having mum all to himself. This stripy baby will feed solely on her milk for the first two months. for a cat nap. It won't be long before he can join this older pair for a romp around their playpen. No matter what part of the animal kingdom they belong to, 
brothers and sisters always tussle. This one's given up the high ground in order to go exploring. Native to Indonesia, Sumatrans are the smallest tiger subspecies. And with only four to 500 left roaming their island home, these small cubs are a big part of the ongoing future of these special cats. Go forward a couple of months, and look how much this trio have grown. The babies join the bigger kittens in the tiger kindergarten, enjoying a roam and taking in the sights and smells of the wider world. As for the siblings, they're giving all the toys from the keeper's fun and games department a good workout. Leaves are amusing for a while, but spotty ears are far more appealing. The favorite today, however, is a brush. Nowhere is safe, not even up a tree. Like all cats, tigers can climb, but it's usually an activity reserved for the youngsters. Older, heavier tigers prefer to keep their paws on ground level. Time for a snack. Playing is thirsty work. Milk bottles all round. Such busy lives for these special little ambassadors. Sometimes all the stops must come out to save an animal species from extinction. And many zoos play a critical part in these ventures. These are bore frogs from the Alps of Southern Australia. Researchers believe there are only 250 of them left in the wild due to a fungal disease. That's why this rescue team has stepped in. Zoo staff have spent years perfecting their husbandry techniques so they can raise these rare frogs in captivity in order to establish an insurance population. After weeks of searching in the wild, success. A well-camouflaged foamy egg nest has been found. A great opportunity to see the life cycle of these special amphibians unfold. The wild eggs are taken back to the zoo and raised in a quarantined, climate-controlled bunker. The pale tadpoles hatch after five to eight weeks, a lot earlier than most frogs. These babies have no need to feed as they live off their own yolk sac until they start to go through metamorphosis. About four weeks later, their transformation is complete. The tiny froglets measuring around a centimetre in length. In this bore bore bunker, keepers are looking forward to when their homegrown or zoo-grown frogs are mature enough to start breeding. So they can do their bit to try and bring their kind back from the brink of extinction. It's getting late in the day. Just enough time to look in on the baby marmosets again. Their mum's taking the afternoon off, so the twins are now in daddy daycare. They better hang on tight, because their father loves bounding around the house. Extreme parenting. It will take two years for these infants to grow to full size, then they will have a tail as long as their dad's. At 20 centimetres, it is much longer than their body. Marmosets are quite agile, able to leap distances close to five metres. The human equivalent would be to jump more than the length of an Olympic pool. Let's say goodbye to these impressive jumpers and have one final bound around with the Bilby Joey. Looks like she's having an early dinner with the rest of the family. Or should that be breakfast, as bilbies are nocturnal? Juicy grubs are on the menu. 
and they're easy for her to track down, thanks to her excellent sense of smell and those impressive ears. No need for this little lady to drink. Like many desert animals, bilbies get all the moisture they need from the food they eat. While bilbies do sometimes live alone, this furry gang look quite happy to hang out and enjoy a good munch together, safe and sound in their comfortable home. It's the end of another long but exciting day for the zoo babies. It's hard to stay up when all your energy has run out. Some try to resist, while others are happy to succumb to an early night. Enclosures are filled with comfy places to curl up. Everyone has their own favourite spot. No matter who you are in the zoo, beauty sleep is a must in order to be fresh and ready to bound into tomorrow's new adventures.